For the first time since the shocking death of pop icon Michael Jackson, we'll be hearing inside details about what exactly happened amid widespread speculation that the doctor charged in the case will claim that Jackson gave himself an overdose. Dr. Conrad Murray will be in court in Los Angeles tomorrow for the start of what is expected to be an unusually long and detailed preliminary hearing. Prosecutors believe that Murray's defense will claim that Jackson injected himself with deadly amounts of the anesthetic propofol while his doctor was out of the room. Thomas Mesereau is a criminal defense attorney who successfully represented Michael Jackson at his child molestation trial. Good morning. Morning. The defense is holding its cards close to the vest, but one of them did say that the question of who injected the propofol was, quote, the issue in this case. What do you make of this as a possible defense, that it was actually Michael Jackson who gave himself an overdose? Well, the defense lawyers have to do something. And what they're going to try and do is deflect attention away from their client and onto Michael Jackson. The, the reality is Michael Jackson was not suicidal. He was not self-destructive in the way they're trying to say, and hopefully their defense will not succeed. There is a difference, though, between suicidal and doing something accidentally, and many people have spoken since his death about his great difficulties in sleeping. Is it out of the realm of possibility, do you think, that if the doctor was not in the room, if he could not sleep, if he felt he had to get rest, that he would self-medicate? It's not likely because he had a doctor in the house for a reason. The reason was he wanted proper medical advice and proper medical attention. This is a defense ploy, pure and simple. Do you think that a jury would look back to the trial where you were in 2005? We're showing these pictures now when he showed up in his pajamas, when we saw him dancing on a car. And, you know, there was so much said and written about Michael Jackson, particularly in the later years, about his behavior. Uh, might a jury conclude he was unstable enough to do something like that to himself? Well, anything is possible, but I don't think it's likely. Remember, the jury in Santa Maria, California, acquitted him of 14 counts, 10 felonies and 4 misdemeanors. They didn't let a lot of this silly media attention divert them from looking for the truth. What's your thought now as, as uh, we're heading into what will surely be a, a most publicized, uh, you know, another spectacle involving uh, Michael Jackson? You're someone who knew him, not just the persona, but the person of Michael Jackson. What is it that you hope comes out of this trial, Tom? Well, I'm sorry that the defense is going to have to bash Michael Jackson to try and divert attention from their guilty client. The reality is he was a nice, kind, decent individual. He wanted to change the world in a positive way through music and art and love and kindness. And unfortunately, I think the defense is going to try and attack his character, and hopefully it will not work. Well, Thomas Mesereau, we will all be watching very closely. And uh, I thank you so much for taking the time to come in and speak with us. Thank you for inviting me.